Hey guys and welcome to Nick Root. In today's video we're going to go over how to make a small, medium, and large cactus and how I use these techniques to, uh, it, it's essentially the same pattern but I end up just making more chains along the way and I'll tell you how I do that um, to adjust the size and width of my cactus. You can really do this design with um, any size if you want to go up or you want to go down, you just kind of follow the same general outline to do this. I, it's pretty much what's going on. Um, I'm loving these and they're really cute and I got these little miniature terracotta pots at my local craft store. I always wondered, what do you do with like the little mini ones? Are they just for uh, seedlings, basically? Or are they actually like, what else would you use them for other than to make weird, creepy gnome statues like my local craft store does? They make these weird ones where they make... The pots do weird shapes. Anywho, my local craft store does, and it's kind of bizarre. So what you're going to need for this project is you're going to need some terracotta pots. You're going to need worsted weight uh, yarn in any color that you'd like. The big issue is that when you're working with your yarn and your hook, that you don't have any uh, gaps, any holes in your work. So if you want to do a bulky yarn and just go up in a needle size, you can do that. Just make sure that when you crochet that there is no holes so your stuffing doesn't go uh, out and about. That is the lovely thing about amigurumi is you essentially, gauge doesn't super duper matter. It does. But as long as you are working with a project and um, you're working with a yarn that you know holes aren't going to pop up through, that's not a big issue. You're, I'm using a size um, D3 or a 3.25 millimeter uh, Susan Bates crochet hook. You're also going to need some stuffing or batting or whatever you put inside your amigurumi to make it go floof and um, also a darning needle for sewing. So if you ever get confused about this I also have a written pattern on my Ravelry for the small, medium, and large uh, cactus. How to start this is you're going to want to make a ring. Just a quick little uh, slip knot is how I do this and you're going to want to, I'm going to show you how I do the small one but it's easy to adjust um, based off of this. So the way that I do this is I'm going to chain for the small one 11 stitches. For the medium you're going to want to chain 16 stitches and for the large, you're going to want to chain 21. I'm adding five stitches between each size. So the, again, the, there we go. Small is 11 stitches, 16, and then the um, large is 21. I add a stitch. They're uh, on variants of 10, 15, and 20 uh, crochet around. But I will show you why I add a stitch um, in just a moment. So we're going to do just the small little guys here. They're the smallest ones and I chain 11 to do so. So I've got my little um, slip knot right here. I'm going to chain 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So I've got my chain right here, and why I do 11 is that for my f chain round, and this is my foundation round, I skip the first chain from my hook right here, and I go into my next stitch here. So I'm not going to go into this one, I'm going to go into this one, and I'm going to single crochet into each chain. So now that I skipped that first one, I should have nine more chains for my hook to go into. So I'm going to go, oops, yeah, there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What's a knit grit video without me splitting my yarn? Eight. 9, and this last one's going to be a little bit weird because it's kind of just your magic ring essentially, 
or not your magic ring, it's essentially just your slip knot. I always like calling them magic rings because I can get them to pull closed like a magic ring. So now you've got this, and what I do next is, a lot of the times when I'm doing my amigurumi, I only work through the front stitch, not with my cactus. My cactus, I'm going to chain one at the end of this, this row here, and I'm going to flip my work like so. So it was going this way, now I'm going from the back. Instead of going through the front stitch only, I go through the back stitch only. And I single crochet down. Every time, you know, see how I chained before I flipped though? That's essentially what I did with my foundation chain there. And we're going to go into the back stitch only. See how all those ridges are along there? That is because I'm only going through that. And the ridges are what kind of makes the, the cactus look kind of spindly. I imagine you could also get the same appearance if you went through the front stitch only, but you'd have to flip your work, and I just am lazy and would rather just go through the back stitches. And now I'm on my last stitch here. And I'm going to chain one, and I'm going to flip my work and go through the back stitches only. We're going to continue going through the back stitches only until I've done this for 18 rounds. So um, this is one, this is two, the next one's going to be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way to 18 stitches. You'll notice that this kind of has this one big ridge here. You'll only want to do that for nine repetitions of that big ridge right there. All right, so I'm going to show you again how I go through the back stitches. So I chained my one already. I'm going to skip my chain one and go into my single crochet that I was working with there. We're going to repeat this for the 10 stitches. And once you do your 18 stitches, I will show you how I attach and make it so that it is seamless. You'll notice that there's no, you can't tell where I seamed it, which is always my preferred. If I can figure out a way to do it seamless, I will. And then I'm going to go into my, I believe that's my sixth. No, that's my seventh. This is my eighth. Ninth and a tenth. Oh no, I was wrong. That's my tenth, is right here. And then we're going to chain one again and flip our work and work through the back stitches only. You'll notice there's a line here. This essentially is going to be um, the side that we're working with. It will eventually go from one, two, three, and you'll go up to um, nine times. I chain one, I flip my work again and I work through the back stitches only. I'm going to continue to do this for another um, 15 rounds because I've already done these 1, 2, 3. Your foundation, you're going to do 18 rounds including your foundation round. So I'll be right back as soon as I get my 18 rounds done. All you're doing is going back and forth through the back loop only, chaining one between each row. Keep going back and forth, back and forth. I'll be right back. All right, so now that you um, have your 18 rows down, you'll notice that both yarn ends are on the same side. That is what you want, even if you have to do like an extra row, that's pretty much um, mine's the way that I did it and the way that I count, it's 18. So they're both on the same side, and I have nine of these little ridges here. So the way that I do this, and it's a little bit weird, is I'm going to take my uh, two ends and put them like this. I leave a very long tail on my last one that I slip stitched off on. I'm going to put it through my darning needle like so and I'm going to go through my foundational chains on my first side and go forward on that. Then I want to come back and go through the back stitch, it's technically the front of the stitch, but it's the back of the stitch when you have it like, like so. So you're not going to go through these front ridges, you want those front ridges to show. So I'm going to hold that tail out of the way, I'm going to pull that through, trying to get my tail out of there, and I'm going to pull it taut. Again, I'm going to go through my next stitch on my foundational rein there, and then I'm going to go through, um, 
from the front to the back. I'm always going forward in a forward motion um, in the back stitch only of this next stitch. I'm going to go forward on the other side, forward on this side, and keep going. I like to pull it nice and tight every once in a while. And I'm going to keep sewing like so. And there's a reason why I like them both on the same side, because when I get done with this, I'll end up with yarn on this side, and then I'll have my yarn on this side, and that's how I close up the two sides. So I'm going to keep going. I'm trying not to absorb my other tail. That is an annoying part that I do not like. I feel like my voice is droning today, and I do not know why. And you'll notice that you're starting to make a ridge. This ridge will match all the other ridges that you created when you are going through the back loop. Oh, I need to hold this yarn. It's not like I'm not maintaining that very well. There we go. There we go. Probably made an excessively long tail, but it's okay. final stitch right here and then go through the last stitch on the other side and now don't split your yarn you'll notice that you've got a tube and it's facing the right way you have the right way out and it's just a nice easy little tube from here we're going to close up this top what I do is I go through the top stitch it's a little, it's a little weird where I'm going through the top ridge on each one of these. So that's my top ridge. Kind of just, there's, there'll be nine, essentially, because you did nine repetitions of uh, two rows. You're going through the top. I don't know if that's showing well enough. But there's a little bump on the top of each of these row repetitions and we're gonna go and take our needle and pull it through that as cleanly as we can and I like to do multiple at a time and not to get my tail in there there we go so we're gonna go through this one pick up pull through when I get to the point where I'm kind of so this is my sixth right here Seventh, eighth, and the final one is along here. I'm gonna have to look close. There we go, we go, we go, we go. No, don't split. This is the biggest pain in the bar. But part of this project. So when you pull your, ta your tail, when you pull your tail, there we go, I can speak English. Mostly. Most days. You'll notice that all those little lines, now that you've pulled, have become kind of like its own starter row, essentially. And I like to take my yarn and go through each of those stitches. There we go. To go under them all and feed through again and it helps close up that hole and you keep pulling it tight and I just go through a couple times just because why not it makes it nice and tight and that way you don't have to deal with your yarn pulling through and it's nice and clean because you went through the same you got to try to be as consistent as you can so if you see there it looks like a star so we're gonna leave that tail there for a second. Ooh, ow! My photographer let us out. You know, probably not rocket science. Now we're going to want to stuff. 
since these are smaller ones, you'll need significantly less stuffing. So I like to try to just make it, get my little guy ready, because it's about to be done. This is the last step. You essentially repeat what you did on the top, on the bottom. And I like to stuff as I go. And push, and push, and push, and add more as I go. I also tend to also do this and then I'll add more at the end as well. There we go. Let's get in there. So I'm going to take my tail and now I'm going to There we are. Repeat. This one's a little bit harder because it's kind of, you're going the opposite way. I'm going to go this way just because I can see the ridges pretty easily going the opposite direction. So I've got four on my needle cleanly. And the big important thing is making sure you're not just splitting yarn out left and right. So I'm going to cleanly, there we go, I was going through the wrong one there. There we go. And this is seven. If you gotta not go through multiple at a time, you don't go through multiple at a time, many at a time. Just saying. That's eight, and my final one's gonna be down here. He's a little bit weird. There we go. Yeah, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. I got that song stuck in my head. And you'll notice that maybe it's not all stuffed. Yep, there's still some space that could use. So I let go of the tension. It's all just kind of making sure you get the right here and there and I'm gonna put that right there and that'll cap it right off we're gonna pull our tail squish around our yarn make sure that our our guy's happy and if you want this guy fatter you can just do a couple more rounds uh, instead of doing say 18 rounds you could do 20 and that'll actually make it a little bit thicker I like doing 18 just because I like my guys and how they can actually fit in there afterwards. There we go, come on. Just keep going around until you notice that it's no longer showing anymore any of the stuffing. And once it's tight again. in the butt, but it's how it works. It does work. That was a good sound. That sounded like snapping yarn, but it wasn't actually. Alright, this is the last one, so I've already gone around. This is my third time around. And since I'm pulling it tight, that's pretty much sealed up. It's a star you can do on either side and have it be the same. I feed my tail through the side. There we go. From the bottom, in the hole, up the side. And I'm going to do the same thing here now that I've stuffed it. I waited until I was stuffed in the... to get the rest of that done. So I'm going to go through the side here, through my center, with my darning needle. And then I cut and form and you're gonna want to squish and all that good stuff. And I cut my tails off, get the remnants of my cat Loki off of it as well. And we stuff them right in there. It's a cute little cactus. You could use this as a um, pin stitch, you could put darning needles in it and it'd be cute as a decoration and you can do all kinds of stuff with your cactus. He's pretty cute. Pretty happy with how these turned out. I'm also going to be painting these terracotta pots because I noticed that when I take 
this sticker off, it leaves this residue and it drives me crazy. I know Gooby Gong can probably take care of that, but I don't know if I want to Gooby Gong these terracotta pots because I feel like it might absorb the oil that inherently comes with Gooby Gong because see, like, it's this residue that I also have on a bunch of these. So I'll see how it looks when I paint them and what I might paint them and I might update in a future video. So that's pretty much all there is to my um, amigurumi cactus. You can use these as cute little pin stitch holders or really anything that you want. If you are uh, confused by any of this, I also have a pattern on my Ravelry. You can go find the links for that down in the doobly-doo. I would actually have it linked in an annotation, but for some reason Ravelry is not an accepted link and YouTube won't let me. Either way, it's down in the doobly-doo and um, so is all my other social media links. Do all the, if you like this video, hit like, do the subscribe thing, you know, all the YouTube business, and um, yeah. Till next time, guys. Bye!